Good evening. Welcome to Around the World with Brandy and D. And tonight I have my good friend, Dr. Joseph Firestone, Empowering, Empowering Democracy. And he will be live after this show at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I just want to open the show up and a little bit about uh, the devastating uh, earthquake that hit Turkey and Syria. That right now, from what I'm reading from the New York Times, it's saying uh, more than 12,000 people in Turkey and Syria have been killed. And um, Erdogan is being criticized, but he said, how could you possibly predict something of this magnitude? How could you ever prepare for something of this magnitude? And where AIDS concerned to Syria, there's a problem with aid coming into Syria because of the sanctions. And nearly 11 million people inside Syria have been affected by the earthquake, according to the UN. And 4 million, million of them rely on aid agencies for basic humanitarian needs like clean water and food. Uh, you know, Dee, I think you're sharing another article. Yeah, well, right now, yeah, I'm just talking about uh, something about uh, this, the uh, earthquake. I'm not reading the article yet. Okay. And then I just wanted to share, too, that the United Nations said at least 10 Palestinian refugees living in Syria have died of, as a result of the earthquake, and that there are currently 62,000 Palestinian refugees living in camps in the northern part of the country that are affected by the earthquake, and the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees has requested 2.7 million in aid from the international community to respond to the earthquake relief. So it's just really sad, especially when you have people living in refugee camps to begin with. And tonight we're gonna to be also talking about Palestine, some noobs, Arab news, the Nord Stream pipeline, Barcelona, and some news from the USA. And right now I'm going to read from, let me get this up, from Arab News about drones that are being used for rescue, the rescue mission. And right I the world continues to watch in despair the devastation caused by two earthquakes measuring 7.8 and 7.5 on the Richter scale that struck both Turkey and Syria early on Monday morning. And this article says the combined death toll surpassing 11,000. Wednesday, international aid agencies, humanitarian groups, military forces, government, and private sector bodies have all been involved in providing help to the region. Our air area supplying some answers have been modern technology. Drones, which are increasingly known for their role as weapons in modern warfare, are also used useful tools during national disasters, such as earthquakes. The drones for sure play an important role in Turkey as we speak. Hans Jan Gerzi, Chief Product Officer at the Digital Containers Shipping Association, told Arab News during the LEAP conference in Raiday on Wednesday. Gerzi, who was on the panel looking at drones and autonomous vehicles, added first, the drones can provide a clearer picture of what has happened. The drones are equipped with high, with ultra high definition cameras. They can also be equipped with heat sensors and detect detection and thus detect people. Wow. They can deliver medicine and small pieces of cargo. They can also detect gases like methane. Dr. Jazim Haji, president of the Artificial Intelligence Society, who also took part in the discussion, underlined the role AI can play in such disasters, including forecasting extreme events, developing hazard maps and assisting in situational awareness and decision support. NASA technology can help in hearing the heartbeats of individuals trapped under debris and rubble. This technology has frequently been used in the aftermath of earthquakes. 
And in 2015, the NASA find a tool was able to locate four men buried underneath mud brick, wood, and other debris following an earthquake in the Napoli's village of Shantara. The same technology was also used in 2017 during an earthquake measuring 7.1 in, in Mexico City. The UN utilized its emergency mapping satellite, a live map that shows in real time the damage caused by an earthquake and its level of impact within hours on Monday. However, what's that? Hmm? However, political conflict can have the last word when it comes to getting aid quickly to regions hit by natural disasters. A resident in northern Syria who spoke to Arab News on conditions of anonymity said the main issue is that aid has become politicized, so even if this tech is available, it is likely it won't reach those areas. Hmm. Raj Masay, a journalist, a Syrian journalist from Afrin, told Arab News, all of our friends and relatives are under the rubble now in Afrin and Jindars. I haven't had a moment to rest since the earthquake happened. I speak with my relatives all the time. There is no aid coming to these areas, no water, no food, no rescue. The cities are now further devastated. The people helping to pull out the rubble are civilians doing so with their bare hands. All the aid is being blocked by members of the Turkish-controlled Syrian militia. Mosa added that small cameras used by doctors to see inside the rubble were helpful, but getting such technology into occupied areas was difficult. You think that everybody would work together? Yes, that's what you would think. That's, that's you except, know, here, except it's politicized. Right. Yeah. Mm. yeah um, you stop the screen. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, here it starts off as a what is this recording button is on over here? It has uploading. I don't understand. Uploading recording, please. Uh, ask yeah. all guests to stay in the studio until the recordings are done uploading. I have something like that going on okay, with me too. Okay, it may be StreamYard just made the local recording capability it's been advertising oh okay maybe they've made it available now to everybody who has a particular type of account um have you got a business account with them yeah um yes okay, i have a business account with them too and so instead of two columns that we're seeing on on the thing the private chat and comments we're now also seeing uh, the recording column. Oh, okay. The third recording column, or at least I'm seeing. <coughs> you want to pick out an article? Uh, hang on a second. I have to go to the comments to see. Yes. Uh, to see what the articles are, because you have <laughs> them there, right? What's see? that? I say you uploaded them there as usual. Yes, in the comments, the regular comments, yes. This way I could do it earlier. And um, Okay, what about the news roundup? Yes, I think you'll like that one. Okay, so I will do that one. Let me get the link here. And load it up on my system. And yeah, that's what the last article got me. Is here you're thinking of something's really good using high tech and everything else, and then you have to have people being selfish or being conflictful. Yeah, conflictful is a better word for it. When this is not about politics. No, it's it should be just about um, rescuing people. Yes, it should. But people have their, you know, needs met to the best they can. Yes. So let me get to uh, sharing the screen to get the article.
Okay, so can you see it on your screen? Oh, there it is. Let me put, put it up at the screen. Okay. So it's uh, from uh, from Arab America. It's the source of the article. The headline says, News Roundup. Sorry, bad news from the Middle East for the U.S. Uh, okay. For the U.S., much less Arab Americans, Palestinians, and even some Israelis. So, let's get... This was written by... Uh, John Mason, who's an Arab America contributing writer, and I'm going to expand the type. The type is light, and it's probably hard to see on your screens. Four um, interrelated events in the Middle East comprise this week's news roundup. First is how Secretary of State Tony Blinken's recent visit to Israel resulted in absolutely nothing for Palestinians. Okay, remember, this is an Arab America publication. Second, an attack by Jewish settlers on a Christian Christian quarter of West uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem exacerbates the Israeli-Palestinian problem. Third, the fact of the West Bank's Jewish settler population exceeding half a million people only accentuates the issue of the Israeli-Palestinian crisis. Fourth, much an opinion as an event, a, a dire scenario is presented about Netanyahu's, quote, full-scale assault on Israel's democratic institutions, unquote. Next section says, Palestinians get nothing from Secretary of State uh, Blinken's recent visit to Israel. U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Anthony Blinken, that's of course a typo, Anthony Blinken's recently completed rapid, rapid fire visit to the Middle East was designed uh, to pay homage to the new right wing Israeli government. He left barely a crumb behind for the Palestinians. While predictable, Blinken's visit <clears throat> intended to convey a message to re-elected Prime Minister Benjamin um, um, Netanyahu and his far-right wing ruling team. That was to warn the government that it may be veering too close to autocracy. Specifically, Blinken warned that Israel's, quote, efforts to limit the democracy it offers to its Jewish citizens via the gutting of the judiciary would cause Israel problems in the United States. This was from the Mondo Weiss News Service. Next bullet point. He further intimated to the Palestinians the, administ quote, the administration of Joe Biden would remain indifferent to their plight, offering no more than a few meaningless and empty gestures, unquote. Well, that's exactly what we thought, D. Yes, exactly. Uh, the Blinken focus on the question of whether Israeli democracy is a cover for the new government's crimes against West Bank uh, Palestinians. Um, uh, uh, Mondo Weiss avows that 
that the government intends to impose a, quote, permanent Israeli military presence in Palestinian territory, full Israeli control of the borders, and the right for Israel to launch raids on Palestinian towns and villages at will, unquote. Palestinian President Abbas, to whom um, the Blinken made a side visit, wasn't fooled by the Secretary of State. Uh, Blinken admitted Palestinians are experiencing a shrinking horizon of hope, not an expanding one. And that, too, we believe needs to change, unquote. So there, uh, President Abbas is shaking hands with Tony Blinken with the Palestinian flag in the background. Yes, Mahmoud Abbas. In the West Bank city of uh, Ramallah on January 31st, 2003, attack on Jerusalem's Christian quarter emboldens Jewish uh, settlers. Christian leaders in the Holy Land condemn the violence of the late January assault by Jewish settlers on an Armenian restaurant in Jerusalem's Christian quarter. That's really dirty pool. Yes, it is. To attack an Armenian restaurant. On Thursday evening, according to the Catholic news source Crux, quote unquote, a group of settlers swarmed the, tab the Taboon Wine Barat, uh, the New Gate, in the Christian Quarter of Jerusalem. CCTV footage shows the group carrying banners and throwing chairs violently towards the restaurant and those seated inside. Christian leaders urged Israel to protect its minority citizens and warned of, quote, radical aggression by forces determined to impose an exclusively Jewish character on the city, unquote. That's, of course, uh, Jerusalem itself. Specifics of the case are Israeli police who arrived an hour after a call had been made, ushered the crowd away, but reportedly made no arrests. The Assembly of Catholic um, 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 Ordinaries, ordinaries, that strange expression, of the Holy Land reacted quickly, saying, quote, this unprovoked violence instilled fear in the shopkeepers and resident, residents of the Christian, Christian Quarter, as well as visitors, calling the incident the latest in a series of episodes of religious violence that is affecting the symbols of the Christian community and beyond, unquote. The Orthodox uh, Jerusalem um, on Eastern Patriarch Cape was equally assertive, saying that, quote, allowing members of such radical groups to freely march and roam around the neighborhoods of Jerusalem while armed and having declared criminal intentions is considered as complicit in the attack and displays unwelcomed leniency with the criminals. Timing couldn't have been worse. The settlers' violence coinciding with the Holocaust Memorial Day and with the settlers cursing the Muslim prophet uh, Mohammed, which incited a lone Palestinian youth to kill seven Jews at their synagogue. And the Catholic uh, um, the clergy averred, quote, it is a priority that the political and religious authorities work according to their own responsibility to bring the civil and religious life of the city back to serenity, insisting that Jerusalem, quote, must remain the homeland of uh, believers of all faiths 
and not hostage to radical groups, um, unquote. Look at that riot. God. They swarmed the Tarboon Wine Barat of the New Gate in the Christian quarter of East uh, Jerusalem. West Bank Jewish settler population exceeds half a million. A Jewish pro-settler group in Jerusalem recently reported the number of Jewish settlers in the occupied bank reached half a million. Some leaders of that group, the Los Angeles Times reported, are, quote, predicting faster population growth under Israel's new ultra-nationalist uh, government. Director of the group, uh, Baruch uh, Gordon, and settler in Biat El, exclaimed, quote, we've reached a huge hallmark. We're here to stay, unquote. New members of the ultra-nationalist government under Prime Minister Netanyahu vehemently oppose Palestinian statehood and are making Jewish settlement expansion its top uh, priority. Specifically, nothing totally new um, um, in the new initiative since for the past three decades settlements have grown under every Israeli government regardless of their pro-Palestinian statement sentiments. Settler expansion has continued under the Biden administration quote, despite renewed American appeals to rein in construction following the end of the Trump administration's hands-off approach, unquote. A large majority of the international community sees settlements as illegal, an obstacle to peace. Quote, and the Palestinians see them as a land grab that undermines their chances to establish a viable contiguous state. That's exactly what I've thought about settlements since the middle of the 1970s. <laughs> a new twist, twist in claims to the West Bank. Israel has claimed that that entity, quote, is disputed um, um, the territory rather than occupied territory, saying that terminology denies the Jewish people's historical presence in the land. The settlers and their supporters in government view the West Bank as the biblical and historical heartland of the Jewish people and are opposed to any partition. Uh, there are many observers that see that Palestinians and Israelis in the West Bank live under a two-tiered legal system that grants settlers special status and applies much of Israeli law to them, including the right to vote in Israeli elections and the ability to access certain public services. Palestinians live under Israeli military rule and do not enjoy the legal rights and protections afforded to settlers. That is so vicious. The Jewish settlement of Efrat in the occupied West Bank. Full-blown cities have arisen in the military in uh, the military occupied West Bank, squeezing out any sense of Palestinian community. 
That's the caption to that photo, okay, from Efrat. Does look like a full blown city, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, Netanyahu's quote, full scale assault on Israel's democratic institutions, a new Middle East Institute, um, MEI opinion piece suggests that newly re-elected Prime Minister Netanyahu is set to, quote, transform the, quote again, only democracy in the Middle East, unquote, into what the founder of Zionism, Theodore Herzl, the Theodore Herzl warned against A state of the Jews that is nothing more than just another Levantine state. Quote, unquote, unquote. <laughs> the author of the opinion feels that uh, Netanyahu will teeter on the brink of pushing through, quote, this virtual coup d'etat, unquote, but will stop short of such a disaster. Calling Netanyahu's, sorry, I scrolled a little too fast here. It's been hard to control the scroll bar. Calling his strategy a transparent game of destructive um, by leveraging, unquote. The strategy includes the following elements. First, the Supreme Court of Israel would be subordinated to the executive branch. There would be politicized uh, legal advisors assigned to all government offices. The free press would be weakened, and disproportionate amounts of state funds would be awarded to religious, to, uh, to nationalist, and ultra conservative institutions. Uh, but Netanyahu has used the, quote, doctrine of destructive leveraging many times in the past, and now he's enacting it to, quote, achieve success on three issues. First, okay, is annihilating the Oslo Accords and the two-state uh, solution. Second, um, the curbing Iran's nuclear weapons program and carrying out what is effectively regime change in Israel. Uh, Netanyahu's new ultra-conservative government has also vowed to, quote, collapse the Palestinian Authority, um, annexing part or all of the West Bank, leaving its three million Palestinian residents without uh, voting rights and under a non-democratic, coercive uh, regime, unquote. At the same time, Jewish settlements will be increased, especially under the two, two of the most ultra-conservative Palestinian-hating government ministers, specifically Bezalel Smotrich and Itamar Ben-Gavir. There is Ben-Gavir. Smiling, he is just a very fat cat. Just two. Okay. Um, um, an attempted disguise of this harsh circumvention of a need for Israeli Arab peace over the Palestinian issue. Um, Vanessa Yahoo has replaced it with the Trump administration's introduction to the so-called Abraham Accords. These are commercial agreements with Arab countries that promote trade, not a peace. Um, but Netanyahu's initial plan to change the character of Israel's regime was to replace the country's liberal elites. 
Now the plan is morphed into one of, quote, all-out regime change, borrowing pages from Viktor Orban's Hungarian and Recep uh, uh, Erdogan's Turkish uh, books. The opinion piece's author points to several critical actions of its own. The U.S. government must leverage to counter this potentially damaging Israeli strategy. It's more than potentially damaging. It's disastrous. Yes. One such action is, quote, on the peace front, Washington should relink um, Israeli Arab with Israeli Palestinian peace negotiations. Sources. In latest visit, um, 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 Blinken offers nothing to Palestinians. That one was from uh, from Mondo Weiss on February 3rd. Holy Land church leaders condemn settler attack in Jerusalem's Christian quarters. That's from Crux, Taking the Catholic Pulse, January 28, 2023. And, quote, Jewish settler population in the West Bank surpasses half a million. That's from the Los Angeles Times, February 2nd, 2023. The Biden administration is missing Netanyahu's transparent game of destructive leveraging by Iran uh, Etzion, a non-resident scholar at the Middle East Institute, a diplomat, and strategist with more than 20 years of experience in senior government positions gay in Israel. <clears throat> and that was on, on February 2nd, 2023. And the author again was John Mason, PhD, who focuses on Arab culture, society, and history. And he's the author of Left Handed in an Islamic World, an anthropologist journey into the Middle East is from New Academia Publishing, God bless you, 2017. God bless you again. He has taught at the University of Libya in Benghazi, the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in New York, and the American University in Cairo. John served with the United Nations in uh, Tripoli, Libya, and consulted extensively on socioeconomic aid and political development for U.S. aid and the World Bank in 65 countries. Okay, I guess that's yes. that one. Yeah, so uh, the, this right-wing government is heading off a cliff. Uh, uh, yes, they're, uh, they're driving Israel off the cliff. Yeah. Okay, it, it, you know, it will it will soon be considered a state, you know, that must not be allowed to exist. Right. Alienating the West. You know, it's not a good thing. I mean, we've said that for a while there. It's just, it's it's not been good. And it's just yeah, even... I mean, I mean obviously, it's, it out. you know, conducting <laughs> ethnic um, uh, cleansing. Right. And violating international law uh, by taking the West Bank from the Palestinians. Right. It has no right to do that. And they keep saying the Bible all the time, but that's not law. It, it may be law to them, but it is not international law. No. Because anybody could take a book out and say, well, according to this book. Right. According to this book. Yeah. I and mean, pretty much it's to say, no, this is what the law is. You can't be throwing your book or your your story or your belief system. This is what international law is. Uh, yes, and there are other books, too. Okay, There's the Christian Bible, um, you know, mm -hmm. the New Testament. Okay. Uh, and there's the Koran. Okay, and all of them are viewed as law by their fundamentalist adherents. Right. 
But if everybody <clears throat> listened to their fundamentalist adherents, there would be no international law. And there would be continual conflict that would consume the world. Exactly. And we can't have that. No. And as Martin K. O'Connor says, you can't negotiate in good faith with Zionists. No, because those Zionists have that end goal. They want all the land there. It's just, um, it's just like a Zionist mission. It's, and actually you've got throwing, you know, the Jewish population and then you have Christians that are into that Zionism. But then you have people that are just secular that don't want any of it. They just want to lead a normal <laughs> life. Right. Okay, for myself, the original meaning of Zionism as I understood it, and I, I'm sure it's not, you know, the original meaning, but for people in the United States who supported Israel, when the state of Israel was founded okay, in 1948, that was about establishing a state in that part of the world that would be a refuge for Jews. It was not about taking over the whole of Palestine for Jews. It was not about um, um, getting rid of the Arabs in Palestine. It was not about the ethnic cleansing that is now taking place. It was not about having uh, settlers in the West Bank. It was not about any of that stuff. Right. To us, to us, Zionism doesn't mean that stuff. Mm -hmm. It means or meant establishing a Jewish state, okay, in that area. That was all it meant. Mm -hmm. I personally see this other Zionism, this extremist uh, Zionism, as a very unhealthy kind okay, of nationalism, which is akin to the fascisms of Europe. Yes, I agree. Because you see that the nationalists with the Christian nationalist acting the same way with the Zionism. They were acting the same way. And of course, the extreme of the way they were acting was Nazism. Yes. I mean, to us, this is a dreadful development. It is. Dreadful development. This is not a state, or I should say not a regime, that the United States has any business allying itself with. It should end that alliance forthwith because this regime is violating the human rights of the Palestinians, of the human rights of the Christian Palestinians. Right. All the Palestinians that are there, whether they, you know, hold a belief system or not, because that was an issue these uh, right wing uh, Zionists had a problem with, is that you had people coming over whose grandparents live in uh, Israel and are practicing Jewish, but the grandkids living in Russia don't practice any religion. But they came over to Israel under the grandparent under this grandparent clause. And they are having a problem with people coming in from Russia and not having any strong religious belief. But you're better off having, you know, a secular population or people that can separate religion from law and can respect each other. But it seems right right wing fanaticism just you, you just can't and negotiate with it. And that goes for any com any country that has right-wing fanatics. Okay, did you want to move to another 
Yes, I just want to thank Martin for being here. Thank you. He says he has to leave because the battery's going out. And thank you for your contribution. Yes, let me get to another article. Uh, do you want to read or I can read? It doesn't really matter. Uh, why don't you read this uh, second one? Because I've... Okay, let me go. A lot of reading okay. time so far. Okay, let me see. Drones. I read that. We have that one. Oh, uh, this is cool. And then we'll do the uh, pipeline after this. This should be quick. The mayor of Barcelona suspends all institu institutional ties with Israel. This is from today, February 8th. The Barcelona mayor suspends institutional relations with apartheid Israel, including twinning agreement with Tel Aviv, until the Israeli authorities put an end to the system of violations of Palestinian human rights and fully comply with the obligations imposed on them by international law and various United Nations resolutions. The Palestinian BDS National Committee, the largest Palestinian coalition leading the BDS movement for freedom, justice and equality, salutes the mayor of Barcelona, Ada Colo, and the grassroots groups who helped end institutional links with apartheid Israel. Barcelona has become the first city council to suspend ties with apartheid Tel Aviv in solidarity with the Palestinian people, a move that is reminiscent of the historic and courageous city councils that pioneered cutting links with apartheid South Africa. With the current Israeli government, the most far-right, racist, sexist, and homophobic ever, accountability is more needed than ever to end its impunity and dismantle apartheid. We call on institutions worldwide to follow in Barcelona's footsteps and end their own involvement in sus sustaining Israeli crimes against humanity. Well, that's it. Countries have to step up. That's the only way we're going to see some kind of change. That's right. That's right, because what the Israelis are doing has to be met with the threat of counterforce, right. or they will keep doing it. <laughs> right, and that's the one thing I fear with the United States. Uh, you know, you have, um, I, mean, I mean, Biden, like we said, Biden would do something, because if a right-wing president gets in, then they always go, especially like Trump, he caused more problems. He was so with Netanyahu, and so with Israel, he was a pain, you know, he was a pain in the ass with it. I mean, he was just so in love with Israel, whatever the government wanted, he, you know, couldn't do enough for them. So we just really need the Democrats to kind of do as they say. When they say the two state solution, let's focus on that and let's try to do something. But yes, more states need to act up, need to act and um, se separate themselves from Israel. Um, I guess I'll just have the one more article because it's 8.44 and just talk about today with the... Um, okay, should we do how America took out the Nord Stream pipeline? Yes. Okay, would you like me to do that one? Sure, I'm, I think you'd like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know certain things are like your ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what makes you think I'd like that? I don't know. It's just <laughs> it just seems like it's in, in your territory. <laughs> it just fits my personality, huh? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can get it up here. Hmm. Get this other one out of here. Oh, it's by Seymour Hirsch. Yes. Of course it's in my territory. Yes. <laughs> A man with credibility. The fantastic Seymour Hirsch. What a journalist. Yes. And this was only 14 hours ago. Okay, let's see. 
share the screen for this one. Well, you know, I was sure it was the UK that took out the pipeline. I was too. Just UK Our took out the Nord Stream pipeline. Yes. Nicemo Hirsch. The New York Times called it a mystery, but the United States executed a covert sea operation that was kept secret until now. Uh, you know, Germany, I can't understand uh, Germany just um, tolerating this. It's completely against uh, German interests. Okay, it makes them vulnerable to deindustrialization, which is proceeding there as we speak. I mean, if someone had done something similar to the United States, that would have been the equivalent of a declaration of war from our side. Oh, definitely. The U.S. Navy's diving and salvage center can be found in a location as obscure as its name. Down was once a country lane in rural Panama City, a now booming resort city in the southwestern panhandle of Florida, 70 miles south of the Alabama border. The center's complex is as nondescript as its location, a drab, concrete, post-World War II structure that has the look of a vocational high school on the west side of Chicago. A coin-operated uh, laundromat and a dance school are across what is now a four-lane road. The center has been training uh, highly skilled deep water divers for decades. Sorry, I had to stop there for a minute because there was something obscuring my view of the article. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Where is it again? The center has been training highly skilled deep water divers for decades who, once assigned to American military units worldwide, are capable of technical diving to do the good using C4 explosives to clear harbors and beaches of debris and unexploded ordnance, as well as the bad, like blowing up foreign oil rigs, fouling intake valves for undersea power plants, destroying locks on crucial shipping canals. The Panama City Center which boasts the largest indoor pool. Uh, let's see. Sorry, it's a little hard to control the arrow on this one. Which boasts the Panama City Center, which boasts the largest, the second largest indoor pool in America, was the perfect place to recruit the best and most taciturn graduates of the diving school who successfully did last summer what they had been authorized to do 260 feet under the surface of the Baltic Sea. Last June, the Navy divers operating under the cover of a widely publicized midsummer NATO exercise known as Ball Tops 22 planted the remotely triggered explosives that three months later destroyed three of the four Nord Stream pipelines, according to a source with direct knowledge of the operational planning. Two of the pipelines, which, collect, which were known collectively as Nord Stream 1, 
had been providing Germany and much of Western Europe with cheap Russian natural gas for more than a decade. A second pair of pipelines called Nord Stream 2 had been built but were not yet um, operational. Now, with Russian troops massing on the Ukrainian border and the bloodiest war in Europe since 1945 looming, President Joseph Biden saw the pipelines as a vehicle for Vladimir Putin to weaponize natural gas for his political and territorial ambitions. As for comments, Adrian Watson, a White House spokesperson, said in an email, quote, this is false and complete fiction, unquote. Tammy Thorpe, a spokesperson for the Central Intelligence Agency, similarly wrote, quote, this claim is completely and utterly false, unquote. Biden's decision to sabotage the pipelines came after more than nine months of highly secret back and forth debate inside Washington's national security community about how to best achieve that goal. For much of that time, the issue is not whether to do the mission, but how to get it done with no overt clue as to who was responsible. There was a vital bureaucratic reason for relying on the graduates of the center's hardcore diving school in Panama City. The divers were Navy only and not members of America's Special Operations Command, whose covered operations must be reported to Congress and briefed in advance to the Senate and House leadership, the so-called Gang of Eight. The Biden administration was doing everything possible to avoid leaks as the planning took place late in 2021 and into the first months of 2022. President Biden and his foreign policy team, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, Secretary of State Tony Blinken, and Victoria Nuland, the Under Secretary of State for Policy, the infamous Victoria, had been vocal and consistent in their hostility to the two pipelines, which ran side by side for 750 miles under the Baltic Sea from two different ports in northeastern Russia near the Estonian border, passing close to the Danish island of Bornholm before ending in northern Germany. The direct route which bypassed any need to transit Ukraine had been a boom for the Germany a boon for the German economy. That's boon, B-O-O-N, for the German economy. <laughs> Please excuse the possible pun, which enjoyed an abundance of cheap Russian natural gas, enough to run its factories and heat its homes while enabling German distributors to sell excess gas at a profit throughout Western Europe. Action that could be traced to the administration would violate U.S. promises to minimize direct conflict with Russia. Secrecy was essential. From its earliest stage, Nord Stream 1 was seen by Washington and its anti-Russian NATO partners as a threat to Western dominance. The holding company behind it, Nord Stream AG, was incorporated in Switzerland in 2005 in partnership with Gazprom, a publicly traded Russian company producing enormous profits for shareholders, which is dominated by oligarchs known to be in the thrall of Putin. Gazprom controlled 51% of the company, with four European energy firms, one in France, one in Netherlands, and two in Germany, sharing the remaining 49% of stock and having the right to control downstream sales of the inexpensive natural gas to local distributors in Germany and Western Europe. Gazprom's profits were shared with the Russian government and state gas and oil revenues were estimated in some years to amount to as much as 45% of Russia's annual budget. The U.S.'s political fears were real. Putin would now have an additional and much, hang on a second, I would have an additional and much needed major source of income. And Germany and the rest of Western Europe would become addicted to low-cost natural gas supplied by Russia 
while diminishing European reliance on America. In fact, that's exactly what happened. Many Germans saw Nord Stream 1 as part of the deliverance of former Chancellor of the Willy Brandt's famed Ostpolitik uh, theory, which would enable post war Germany to rehabilitate itself and other European nations destroyed in World War II by, among other initiatives. Uh, what happened to that? I'm sorry, that went up. It would allow Germany to rehabilitate itself and other European nations destroyed in World War II by, among other initiatives, uh, utilizing cheap Russian gas to fuel a prosperous Western European market and trading economy. Nord Stream 1 was dangerous enough in the view of NATO and Washington, but Nord Stream 2, whose construction was completed in September of 2021, would have approved by German regulators double the amount of cheap gas that would be available to Germany and Western Europe. The second pipeline also would provide enough gas for more than 50% of Germany's annual consumption. Tensions were constantly escalating between Russia and NATO, backed by the aggressive foreign policy of the Biden administration. Okay, I'm sorry, D. I have to cut out of here right now. Oh, I That's what I was going to say. So mainly the, the point of the article is that the U.S. was the one that blew up the pipeline. Yes, which raises a whole bunch of other questions that we should be discussing further maybe tomorrow night. Okay, we'll discuss it more tomorrow night. Yes. Okay, and thank for you. now I'm just going to have to uh, to get out. Okay. And yes, Joe Firestone is going to be on at 9 p.m. on the Joe Firestone channel. Joseph Firestone, uh, Empowering Democracy. Here, what is this? Dan the Man says, Biden is setting us up for a thermonuclear war with this sabotage. That's what it looks like. I just shake my head. This Everything with Biden. And he's... um. Now doing his uh, re-election bidding for 2024, I don't see that happening. I mean, it would have to be some kind of corruption for him to be um, re-elected. This makes no sense at all. I mean, my opinion is it's been a disaster with him. I mean, he's set the neocons on the loose, and, and it's dangerous. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for being here. Thank you, Steve Wolfbrand. Thank you, Dan the Man. And yes, thank you, Martin O'Connor. And I will be back tomorrow at 8 p.m. Thank you all and good night.